Some individuals might prefer a more DIY friendly 3D printer, while for others that could be an absolute deal breaker. And with hundreds of options on the market, only a few truly offer a hands-off experience. And for me personally, I enjoy both a DIY friendly machine and a hands-off machine, but when I have a tight deadline to fill, a hands-off machine is the only option for me. Around a year ago, Anchor Make decided to address the demand for a truly hands-off experience. And as an early supporter of their Kickstarter campaign, I can confidently say that I do not regret backing their project. Because the M5 has proven to be an absolute workhorse, demonstrating its exceptional reliability. And in fact, I actually have two AnchorMake M5 printers and whenever I got them in the studio, they immediately became my go-to printer. However, there is one very notable drawback of the M5 and that is its retail price. Because at $699, it could be very, very difficult for certain people to justify. But that is where the M5C comes into play. The C, this is the compact version of the M5 and it strategically removes some of the luxury options that come standard on the M5. And that is gonna result in a more affordable entry level price. But it is crucial to emphasize that the compact version of the M5 is not gonna compromise in quality. I recently uploaded a dedicated video outlining all of the changes that Anchor Make went through in order to go from the M5 to the M5C, and I highly encourage you watch that video. So the most obvious and notable change is that the M5C no longer has a screen and that initially disappointed me seeing as the M5, the standard version, had one of the best screens on the market. With how responsive and perfectly organized the menu system was, I can confidently say that the screen on the M5 was a true gem. But immediately after I started using the M5C, those concerns quickly faded away. Because surprisingly, the absence of the screen on the M5 had no negative impact on my workflow. And after I started thinking about it, Boron printers and other printers of that category have been functioning perfectly well without screens for years. Instead, these printers operate on a web interface and the M5C, it has a very similar user experience. It's just seamless and intuitive. In my 3D printing workflow, I primarily utilize a screen for bed leveling, preheating, and initializing a print. And while the M5C has maintained that USB-C port, I don't use it because I don't even own a USB-C storage device. For bed leveling, that's something that only needs to be done on occasion, so there's no reason to have a primary screen dedicated to the task. And as for preheating, well, that is gonna tie into my next point of discussion. Along with the M5C, AnchorMake has released a completely and entirely revamped app, which is gonna allow for full printer control and seamless integration to an unlimited number of AnchorMake devices. So this brand new app is gonna allow for fully customizable thermal preheat settings, access homing and other motor controls. You're gonna have Z offset calibration and much, much more. So a couple things are missing and the most notable of those is gonna be fully automatic Z offset calibration. But besides that, dare I put the Anchor Make software above the Bamboo lineup in terms of ease of use for a brand new user. The app is also going to be used to customize the function of the big button on the front of the printer. You can set single press, double press, and long press functionality either during printing or while idle. And some of the better options for the functionality of that button are going to be pause and resume a print, printing from the previous file, and then initiating an auto bed leveling process. So AnchorMake's vision for this big button is very, very promising, but in order for it to actually hold significant value, I believe there's gonna need to be some software improvements. I think AnchorMake could include options for preheating PLA, PETG, or any of the other customizable thermal settings, as well as load and unload filament. And given AnchorMake's history with updating the firmware and software of the M5, I think it is a very reasonable proposition to assume that that button is gonna be a valuable asset in the future. So the M5C does introduce several design modifications and one of those is gonna be along the Y axis. So you can see that the Y axis is running on a single belt drive, as well as the Y axis is no longer inset on the printer. And this actually has a significant benefit because it's gonna make the cleaning process of the printer a lot easier. So obviously I would prefer the M5C to run on linear rails or rods, but considering the price point of this machine, I can completely understand why AnchorMake didn't implement that. 
but on my M5, I haven't dealt with flat spots on the wheels, so I'm going to remain optimistic with these V-rails. So the hot end on the M5C comes with two very significant improvements, and the first one is that the fan shroud can now be removed without unscrewing anything. No screwdrivers at all. You simply grab the fan shroud and lift up, and it comes off. And this is convenient for maintenance because if you have clogs, you can get them out very quickly. And if you need to change the tension on the extruder, you can also do that very quickly. So the second is that the M5C finally comes with an all metal hot end. And for me personally, I don't print any materials over 250C, but I do regularly have long printing sessions of PETG at 235 degrees Celsius. And after those prolonged sessions, my PTFE constantly melts and replacing the PTFE inside the hot end is a very, very tedious task. And of course, I want to say a huge thank you to AnchorMake for sending this printer out to me in exchange for an honest review. And if you guys want to check this printer out for yourself and learn more, you can find some links in the description below that might help you out. Of course, somewhere in the video, I have to thank you guys for your support and dedication to the channel because, well, I thank you for your support and dedication to the channel. If you guys are not subscribed and you're getting any value out of this video, I would appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button down below and while you're at it, click the like button. This way we can get a broader reach and maybe continue to grow. But for those of you that do print in anything over 250 degrees Celsius, the M5C is now going to be capable of printing up to 300 degrees Celsius and essentially any engineering grade filament. Of course, it is not enclosed, so you might need to get yourself an external enclosure, but the M5C is now capable of engineering grade materials. And a very, very welcome change comes in the arena of fan volume. Previously, the M5 had a fan that idled at a very loud volume, easily 55 dB, it might have even been higher. But the M5C at idle, it is just above ambient room volume, so that comes to about 40 dB. And typically, when my prints finish, I might be waiting 10 or 15 minutes finishing a task on the computer, and with that very loud fan idle, it was atrociously annoying. So unfortunately, not everything is perfect, and of course I didn't expect that, but the first thing that I personally noticed was the filament holder. The filament holder is not particularly flimsy, but it's also not a solid milled block of aluminum like on the M5. That is a very premium filament holder. On the M5C, it is a stamped piece of aluminum, and it works for the task. It doesn't wobble around, but it's not as nice as on the previous generation. The problem comes with this reverse Bowden tube. It comes with the flimsiest, floppiest mount, and this is not something I would have ever expected to come out of the Anchor Make factory. This thing is a poor, poor design, and the PTFE fitting actually comes loose. And I don't think this is going to have a negative effect on print quality, but it really has a drastic <laughs> negative appeal for the whole printer. And if I'm trying to find something bad to say about the M5C, it's very hard, so I'm just gonna have to nitpick. And one of those nitpicks is gonna be the location of the USB-C port, because it is on the side of the printer, and if you want to place multiple printers side by side and remain access to that port, you're basically not gonna be able to. Now, I hate to take your attention away from this beautiful M5C, but I do need to introduce you to a very special sponsor of my channel. Now, I know you guys have heard of PCBWay before, but what you might not know is they have a 3D printing department as well. Now, the great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials. You can also print peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. Now, in order to provide the highest quality service prior to printing, PCBWay is actually going to perform a full model analysis of the file you uploaded. That will ensure when your prints arrive, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. So is the M5C perfect? Well, for $399, it's not, and it can't be expected to be perfect. But I will say it absolutely rivals all of the premium products that are double or even triple the price of it. I would say one of the biggest things holding the Anchor Make M5C back from competing with the likes of Bamboo and Corality with the K1 series as well as Prusa is that the M5C doesn't have an accelerometer buried in the hot end. But that doesn't mean that the M5C can't produce outstanding results. 
The M5C can still have incredible results while maintaining the hands-off experience. The only issue that I've had in some of my prints is that I have had some marginal stringing, but I'm pretty confident that's because I actually sliced these models with the profile for the M5 and not the M5C. And well, my results, they speak for themselves because this calibration cube, I printed it in under 10 minutes and every single dimension has nearly perfect precision. I don't know when, if ever, that I unboxed a printer that had a calibration as perfect as the M5C. In every one of my review videos, I always print something from Dan over at Flexi Factory. And in the M5C video, I've printed this brand new Hammerhead Shark. It printed at the 500 millimeter fast mode. Did it actually hit 500 millimeters per second? I doubt it, but it printed in only an hour and a half. The layer lines are perfect. Everything about this looks perfect. And even at those speeds, this thing flexes absolutely flawlessly. Usually these have very loose joints, but it's still good to know that it can print as perfectly as it did at the speed that it did. And one model I'm particularly happy about is this print in place Canon. So this Canon actually also has a compliant hinge on the side, which is completely fused together. But I don't actually think that's Anchor Make's fault specifically because Anchor Make Slicer, it is based on the Cura engine. And if you look at what the designer said, he said that the Cura engine typically fuses this hinge and you need to print this model in Prusa Slicer if you want this hinge to function correctly. So I don't inherently think that is Anchor Make's fault. So this is my first ever transparent PETG print and this is just absolutely beautiful. So some printers can have an issue printing vase mode and some printers can have an issue printing vase mode with PETG. But this has absolutely no delamination anywhere across the model. Every layer is absolutely flawless. This vase came out perfect and it is just phenomenal at how well the M5C performed with this model. And the last thing that I printed was this crate in a polylight beige and it actually did suffer from a first layer issue. And I don't know what happened, I wasn't there to see it, but it didn't persist throughout the model and it didn't really affect the model going forward. But what I will say is if this Anchor Make M5C had a camera like the M5 did, most likely the AI detection would have caught that and it would have stopped the print or at the very least it would have notified the user. That being said, this crate does have fully operational hinges. Everything snaps together perfectly and the crate just overall works very well and is a super, super cool model. So that about wraps it up. I really, really love the Anchor Make M5C. Obviously, I would prefer to have an M5 because it is a more premium printer, but the M5C is a seriously good product for the money, and I don't hesitate to recommend this printer to anyone if this is in their price point. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video about the Anchor Make M5C. If I left anything out or if you have any specific questions, make sure to leave some comments down below. I have a Discord link in the description. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.